Okay, the Libri NMS API. Now, if you're a programmer, if you've dealt with APIs in the past, don't even watch this video. Head over to the docs, look at the API section. This was the very first API I ever used, and if I can figure it out without knowing anything, if you've dealt with APIs, yeah, this will be very straightforward. Uh, just go ahead and uh, look it up. But if you haven't dealt with APIs, or you kind of just want to know what the Libre NMS API has to offer, uh, that's what we're going to go over here. Um, because even if you're not a programmer and you really don't care about APIs, you should really know what APIs are capable of, because eventually somebody is going to say, hey, how can we integrate Libre NMS with this software? Uh, and this is most likely the way you're going to go about it. So you really have to have a good idea of what the API can support and uh, just the whole concepts of it. So that's what we'll go over here. Okay, so what is an API? Uh, for the very basics of it, it's an application programming interface. It's what other applications and programs use to interface into Libri NMS. Um, you can kind of think of its brother or cousin as the human interface, which this is our interface. This is what humans use. Uh, you know, we like seeing graphs and, you know, all these tables and rows and columns. This all makes sense to humans. But it's not very good for other programs and applications to interface with here. Uh, you know, you don't really want to, if you're building a program or application, you really don't want to write the software to, hey, say, click on devices, you know, go to all devices and click on firewalls and then click on this. And then I have my firewall here and then I can read the sys name on this, you know, row. That's all hard to do. Uh, you know, that's kind of a pain for programmers to do that. They definitely do it uh, because if Liberty NMS didn't have an API, we would kind of be stuck doing something like this. Now, we might just go into the database directly and get it, um, and that's even a better solution than doing it this way, but, you know, sometimes you don't have that capability and you're left stuck just scraping the screens here uh, for all this information. But luckily, Libre MS has an API, so we don't need to do, we don't have to worry about any of this. Uh, we can actually make a call to Libre MS and get data back uh, directly. Um, and this is kind of what it's doing right here. Um, we're making a call to Libre MS and it's responding back with some data for us. And there's all sorts of stuff we can call uh, to get information from. So, you know, if we click on devices here, you'll see there's all sorts of stuff in here we can get. Uh, here's list devices. So if I call this, it's going to list a bunch of devices for me. Um, and we're going to go over that right here. Okay, so right off the bat, before we get started here, we need to create an authentication token. And this just allows us to read or write to the API. It's just a method for, you know, just not anybody in the world uh, sending a request to this uh, URL here and getting some data back. Uh, they need this authentication token in the headers in order to do that request. So in order to create that authentication token, you just go over to your Libre NMS, gear icon, API, API settings. Um, and I've already created two here, but you can assign when you create a new access token, you can assign it to a user. So if you only wanted read permissions for this, you could assign it to a user that only has read permissions, and then that token would only be able to read data. Uh, you wouldn't have to worry about writing anything. But for my for my uh, setup here, I'm going to just use the admin user. That'll give me read write permissions. So uh, I already created a token here, and this is the token. So if we go back to our location here, we're going to send a header that's X auth token, and I'm going to copy and paste uh, this token right here into there. And what I'm going to do here, you could use this curl command. Now I will say if you're using Windows, uh, PowerShell, they, they want this in a slightly different format. It does work, but you might have to change some stuff in here a little bit. Uh, for the most part, I actually use like this REST client that uh, Firefox has. It's like an add-on or plug-in for Firefox. Uh, Chrome has one too. That's even a little bit better that I've used, but uh, this one will work fine for our demonstration purposes here. But you can see here, I actually created a, a header already. Um, if you go to custom header, you just type in that X auth token in here. I'm sorry, up here, and then the uh, token in here. So uh, you would just create that. So this just allows me to actually add this header in here uh, anytime I make the request. So right here is the uh, URL, and I got this URL from the docs here. You can see right here. Uh, I basically took off the S because I'm only running HTTP, and the LibreNMS.org would be my IP address of my LibreNMS machine. So you can see here that I've 
copied and pasted that all in here, and I'm going to the devices uh, menu here. Now, if you backspace this out, actually, and hit send, uh, we should get a response back here, and this is actually all the different uh, locations that you can call. Uh, I don't usually do it this way. I just go through the um, docs here and kind of look and see what I can get, because if you click on any one of these, it tells you exactly what you can uh, call to get this information back. So if you see like a list of devices here, uh, it's saying you just go here to devices. You just got to put devices at the end of it. So we're going to put devices here and hit send. And now you can see here that it will come back with a couple here. Uh, my computer's a little slow, but yeah, it's coming back with every single device I have. Uh, these are all the devices. Here's one device. Here's another device. Uh, this is where the device IDs come in handy, but uh, yeah, you can see here's another device. This is 1.1.1. .1 .1. Uh, here's another device ID one. This is my firewall uh, And you can see there's all sorts of information in here all that other information we had in the uh, Librium MS web GUI here Like system name hardware operating system all that stuff's in here still. Here's the hardware uh, Operating system will be in here somewhere OS uh, system name will be in here too, but you can see that uh, pretty much all the information you never need is in this call here. So uh, this is a good way of getting data back, and this data, uh, the way it's formatted is in a format called JSON. So if you're ever working with a programmer or a developer and they want to know what Librium MS is going to return back to them, tell them it's JSON data, and they should be off and to the races after that. Okay, this is great, but we can also add devices and add information into Librium MS via the API, and we'll do that here. So we can actually add a device in. Now, it's the same route. We're going to go to the same uh, slash devices, but we're going to change this to a post request instead. So we're going to go down to this drop down here and put post. We still have our same header in here. That didn't change. Um, and now what it's wanting us to do is put a little uh, JSON in here. So we're going to copy and paste this into our body here. Uh, we're going to remove these quotes because we don't need them for this. Uh, so for the host name, I'm going to add an IP address in here. 4.2.2.2. And that is a, a DNS server on the internet, so I don't have SNMP permissions to that. So I'm going to delete all this because I can't use this. But if it did support SNMP, you know, you could just put your community string in here and maybe change this to version 2, uh, and that would add it. But since we don't have uh, SNMP on this device, I'm going to delete all this. I'm going to go back here, and I saw that you say SNMP disabled. For ICMP only, we need to add this in here. So we need to add... Quote, SNMP disabled, and then we need to say true. Set to true for ICMP only. So that should work. And, you know, with, with ICMP only, we can also set the hardware. So, you know, you can just keep on adding on to this. You could put the hardware in here, too. And we'll just say uh, Internet... Okay, hopefully all this works. Uh, so SNMP disabled, yep, true, a first name. So let's go ahead and set this off. And if you can see here on my devices, I don't have a 4.2.2 .2 in here, so hopefully this works. Okay, we got a message back. This is the response back. See, it also gives us back JSON data when we add devices. So uh, if you're ever writing a program, you can check this uh, to make sure the status message is okay uh, before you continue on with it, whatever you're doing. But also down here, you can see the actual full curl command in this REST client program for Firefox. You can see exactly the command you sent. So if we go back in here and go to all devices, yep, there's our 4.2. And you can see we set the hardware to internal DNS name. And you know, we probably could also set the system name in there too. Uh, but those are just kind of the, some of the examples you can do with the API. Uh, in fact, when I, I wrote a CBS or CSV bulk importer uh, script, and that's all I did was pretty much this. Uh, I just used this add devices and I think a couple other things, uh, so set location or update the device. Uh, but there's a couple other things I did, but basically that was the gist of it. It's just all wrapped in a Python script. So um, yeah, that's uh, how you go about adding the device. Okay, well, that's pretty much the basics of the API. Um, as you can see, there are tons and tons of routes and uh, things you can do in here uh, to click on. So I would highly recommend just going through here and browsing and seeing all the different things you can do because 
one of these might set up a light bulb in your head and be like, oh, well, I can, if I have that capability, maybe I can uh, integrate this software program that I have over here with Librium MS uh, easier. So, yeah, it, it's very, very helpful. Um, I, I almost always deal with the API now just because, you know, once you have all your kind of stuff uh, in here, uh, you're really just getting information out of here. Um, and, and that's kind of why I like the API more than anything is because if you get all your stuff set up correctly, like all your locations, you have some good device groups in here, uh, all your ports are named correctly uh, with your labeling, uh, pretty much if you have everything set uh, up good, it makes using the API awesome, like totally awesome. Like, for example, like I'll have different locations, and if I want to write a script that only affects a certain location, well, I can make a call to Librian MS and say, hey, give me all the devices in this location. Uh, I just want all the devices in this location, and it will respond back with all those. So I don't have to go in here and maybe grab all the devices from Librian MS and then filter them myself. It's already doing all the filtering for me in Librian MS. I don't really have to go. Same thing with ports. If I do my port port types correctly, I can go in here and say, give me all the port types of firewall and respond back to those with the API. Uh, and that's that, that I've seen has been really, really helpful. And even with device groups too, I can say, hey, give me all the device groups for my uh, PF senses. Maybe I have 30 PF senses and I want all of those uh, via the API. I can do all the filtering in uh, Librian MS directly. And so when I'm writing my program uh, on the other side of the API, I can just grab the devices that's already set up for me. I don't have to do any extra filtering uh, on the other side. So it's very important to do that because, uh, yeah, getting your Librium MS set up and, and all squared away 100% is very important if you want to make your life easy. You don't have to, but trust me, it will make your life a lot easier. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to go over here because anything uh, more is going to be more of the same. Uh, you know, it's just different calls, getting back different information, and uh, you can go through here and look at all that. And any more examples, I'd probably have to start going into Python, and that's a whole nother uh, uh, ball. So I might, I might do a little video in the future about the API and Python, but for now, this was just to get an introduction into the API and just see what it's all about. Uh, thank you again.